Hi, my name is Ricky Moses. I'm a first year union carpenter apprentice for the United Brotherhood of Carpenters. In order to become a union carpenter, you have to go through an apprenticeship school. Uh, it takes about four years. Uh, after you go through your apprenticeship school, then you become a journeyman carpenter and you get a certificate that uh, says that you are a qualified carpenter. Uh, Non-union, you should probably go through a trade school, whether that's Delaware County Community College, North Bennett Street uh, College up in Boston, I would highly recommend making sure you go to a school to learn the theory behind what you do, as well as doing work on the side uh, with the master carpenter. Non-union, I was making, depending on where you work, I was making 14 an hour uh, and no benefits, 15 an hour, no benefits. Um, it's rough non-union getting started, the, fun the financial take financial toll that you have to take. Union though, you get, uh, depending if you're working on the city or in the county, uh, in the city you make 18, 52 or 72 an hour, you get full benefits. And by full benefits, you get medical, dental, vision, you get health reimbursement. I would say the toughest thing is learning how to let one thing go in the near out the other. Personally, I think sometimes because you get really passionate about it and you can get over attached to whatever you're working on that you have to remember it's a business. They're not paying for you to, you know, uh, get caught up. They want you to make sure that you get it done, you get it done well, you get it done to code. It's going to be safe, it's going to be structural, it's going to be aesthetically pleasing, but at the same time, don't get caught up in where you're wasting your whole day on the project. And you have to learn about really letting certain things go if you get upset about it, you know, because you want to do well, but you want to be able to make sure that you do well and you have to, you're going to make mistakes. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to say. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to break things. Things are going to fall apart. Um, you're going to have to go back to your foreman or journeyman and say, hey, look, I cut that wrong. I broke this by accident. And you're just going to have to humble yourself and be okay with making a lot of mistakes in the beginning because even they still make mistakes. And I think that's the hardest thing to learn is that you're human, you're going to make mistakes and just let it go. I think the biggest thing about working in this field is, is just the, uh, the visual gratification you get as far as being able to stand back and say, I just watched that come from out of the ground into the sky and I did that. There's nothing like it. Um, especially, I think, one reason why I think there's a lot of kids um, that I know, including myself, that were deterred because of what society is expected for us all to do, go to college, be sit at a desk, you know, in my opinion, humans, not all humans were meant to sit. I'm not meant to sit. I'm meant to be in the elements, feel the sun on my face, feel the cold on my skin, and work, and feel that gratification at the end of the day that I did something. My body's sore, but I feel good about it. And I think that's one of the most satisfying things in that you can drive by that building or that whatever it is, depending on whatever trade you get into, you can drive by whatever it is, tell your kids, tell your grandkids, tell whoever, it's going to stand, you know, longer than you. It's going to be there after you leave. There's very few jobs that you have that gratification. A typical day like for me, uh, I will help a journeyman out as far as whatever he needs. If he needs me to cut him uh, a piece of two by four or whatever size, I'll do that for him. If he needs me to get a measurement so that he can maybe go cut or figure out how to lay out this wall, lay out a window, lay out a door, um, I usually will haul a lot of material uh, and basically just be their wingman and do whatever they need me to do. And that goes throughout the whole uh, trade of carpentry because there's a lot of different components within the trade of carpentry. Uh, successful people have thick skin. They have thick skin. Uh, perseverance and they make sure that at the end of the day they're punctual, they're on time, and they're consistent. That's the biggest thing. Consistency, make sure you get up every day when that alarm goes off and get to work on time. And when you get to work on, tools are hot, ready to go, belts on, you're not standing around with a cup of coffee. Man. I think you have to be a go-getter at the end of the day. You have to be a go-getter and you have to enjoy getting dirty and working with your hands. And if you can do that, if that's what you love to do, it's great. It's not meant for everyone. I would check out uh, the two nonprofit organizations that I'm a part of, First Builders, um, which is uh, with Council Rep James Thompson, uh, Local 164, 
And I would also uh, talk to uh, the GPCA as far as uh, the General Building Contractors Association. They're a great way to try and get in touch with that as well. Uh, anyone that you know that might be you know, uh, in touch with the union, I think the union is a great way to go as far as depending on the career that you want to have. We make a lot, we make very good money for what we do um, and the benefits are great. And we get to retire in our 50s. That's not what most people are able to do. I think uh, that's the best way to go. Now, if you want to go non-union, which is a great option as well, I think you need to seek out mentors. You need to reach out to people through publications like Fine Home Building. You need to go to trade schools like North Bend Street School, which is the oldest trade school in the, company, in the country that started in 1881. They have great programs at those schools. But you have to get out and want it. You have to get out and get it. You have to treat it like you did with sports or your chess club or whatever it is. You have to be a go-getter. So that's my advice.